The Chinese-made Waysear BR6 radiation detector is one of the cheapest Geiger counters available. And while it does work, there are a few issues with it that prospective buyers might find important. Removing the back reveals the classic Geiger-Muller tube that's the heart of the detector. It's a tube filled with a gas at low pressure and two electrodes with several hundred volts DC between them. When a charged particle passes through the tube, it ionizes some of the gas and the voltage accelerates the released electrons, creating additional ionizations to produce an avalanche of current, which is amplified and sent to a speaker to produce the counter's classic tick. This signal is also sent to various counters and the visual display. To activate the detector, press the on button. And after the short page of explanation appears, press the forward arrow and the counter is activated. This blue number is the amount of radiation being detected in microsieverts, the international unit for radiation exposure. The green histogram, which will appear down here, shows the previous eight minutes and how the radiation level varied over time. Once the histogram has completed eight minutes of recording, a large red number appears here, and this is the average value over that time. What this gives us is the rate of the natural background radiation. Don't be alarmed because these levels are extremely low. For example, here we're measuring about 0.12 microsieverts. A single dental x-ray is thousands of times as strong and isn't dangerous. To reset the counters, just press the forward button. And the histogram is zeroed out and we start over again. The first issue with this detector is the units of microsieverts per hour it claims to measure. Severts are the product of the number of particle exposure times their energy. Since Geiger-Muller tubes can't measure energy levels, I find it difficult to believe that this detector really measures severts. I suspect the programming assumes a fixed energy level for all the particles and multiplies that by the number of particles detected. Since every radiation source has a slightly different energy signature, it's questionable how accurate this is. But enough talk. Let's see what this detector can detect. We've shown that it records natural background radiation. So with that as a baseline, let's test some low-level uranium ore. And here we go. The readings indicate this ore gives off around six times the natural background radiation, which is enough to demonstrate the detector's alarm, activated by pressing the speaker button. The threshold level for the alarm can be adjusted by repeatedly tapping on the thermometer. Its default set is 0.5 microsieverts per hour. One press takes that up to one. A second press takes it up to two and the alarm doesn't go off. It can also be set to five microsieverts per hour and then one more press and we're back to the default of 0.5. Next we have some thoriated tungsten welding rods. Like uranium, thorium is an alpha emitter. An alpha particle is the nucleus of a helium atom. The thorium is there because it improves arc stability. This is purely a function of metallurgy and has nothing to do with the fact that it's slightly radioactive. Let's see how it registers. It appears to be slightly weaker than the uranium ore. For our third test, we have an americium 241 source from a common smoke detector. The americium is actually the copper looking material in the very center. It appears to register slightly higher than the first two samples. I think you'll find our next sample surprising. For many years, uranium 
was added to glassware because it created an attractive pale green color. This glass is also slightly radioactive, but at such low levels it isn't dangerous. Dishes made of uranium glass are common in antique stores. One unrelated oddity is that the uranium makes the glass fluorescent, which can be seen by shining a UV light on it. Let's see how it reads. It appears to have leveled out at about 1.20 which is a little higher than the first three samples. Now things are going to get a little bit hotter. This is an old style lantern mantle consisting of cloth impregnated with thorium. These produce very bright pure white light but were discontinued in the US because of concerns about the thorium's radioactivity. Manufacturers switch to yttrium but it isn't as bright and has a yellow hue. As you can hear, it's a lot more active than anything we've tested so far. That's because it has a lot of thorium in it. As can be seen, it's almost three times stronger than anything we've tested so far. If you think that's good, let's see what a piece of high-grade uranium ore does. Let me move the mic closer so you can hear the ticking. That's the sort of thing you'd expect to hear in a science fiction movie. It appears to have maxed out at 7.2, 7.3 or so microsieverts per hour. Pretty high. No, it's not dinner time. Both bananas and Brazil nuts have high levels of potassium, which is slightly radioactive. This is different though. Everything we've tested so far is an alpha emitter. These two products emit beta particles, which are electrons. First, we try the bananas. Not much happening there. That's still at the level of background radiation. Let's try the Brazil nuts. Again, it's at about the same level as background radiation. What's going on? Well, the problem appears to be that although the manual claims this meter can detect beta radiation, it doesn't seem to be able to do so. Ironically, the manual doesn't mention that it can detect alpha particles, and yet, yet that's what it seems to do best. In spite of the two issues I pointed out, I found the Wayseer BR6 radiation detector to be an interesting device for demonstrating the presence of radioactivity in daily life and well worth the purchase price. For more articles covering everything from the strangeness of Fechner colors to the weird world of lucid dreaming, I invite you to visit my main website at waynesthisandthat.com. And as always, thanks for watching.